PS5 Pro just got announced, and trust me, Sony fans aren't happy. Let's check out why. Don't forget everything you use in the video today. There are links in the description below for the best place to get those gaming products. Make sure you check those out at the end of this video. Hi gamers, welcome back to the channel. So at the moment, it's been a massive week for Sony. A couple of failures. Concord has totally failed and been took down. And a lot of people are getting a refund on that game. PS5 Pro just got announced. Are Sony following suit? And will it be a failure like the launch of the PS3? Right, so let's discuss a few things. So Sony announced the PS5 Pro and it's going to be a release only in digital version. That means it's not coming with a dish. Drive. The PS5 digital sells for $700 and then if you want the disk drive with it, it sells for $799. So that's a PS5 Slim with a disk drive for $799. PS5 Pro Digital, no disk drive, is going to launch at $1,200. Now that's $400 increase with no disk drive. Yes, we're getting a couple of benefits. We're getting a two terabyte hard drive. So basically you're getting the storage plus an extra one terabyte of storage. So we could buy a one terabyte storage for our PS5 for $150 at the moment and you can get a two terabyte for just under three. Looking back at when I bought my PS5, yes, prices have gone up a little bit. They've dropped back down to what they were in 2022. So I paid around $800 for PS5. I bought the camera. I bought an extra controller. I bought the media controller, a couple of games, and I paid just over $1,000 for the lot. The stand was included. With the PS5 Pro, you're not going to get the stand included. So the stand is separate on the PS5 Pro, which is going to cost you an extra $50. So if you were to buy the PS5 Pro and a disk drive and a stand, you're looking at a staggering $1,000. $574 <laughs> just for the PS5 Pro with a disk drive and a stand. Look, like Sony, come on. Who in their right mind is going to upgrade to a PS5 Pro and pay a $1,500 plus dollars for, a, for a PS5 Pro? Come on. As a content creator myself, yes, I'd like to buy one, but I can't just afford that price even if I'm making videos on it. Also, comparing that to the PS5 Slim, if you bought a PS5 Slim with a disk drive, a stand, and a two terabyte hard drive, you're still coming in at around $1,039, $400 less than what you're gonna be paying for a Pro. There are a few extra features with the Pro, and I will explain what those are, but are they really worth paying that extra $400? Now, before we jump to the specs, you might be asking why Sony are doing this. I think the reason for not including the disk drive is Sony know that a lot of people are going back to physical media and are buying physical games compared to digital. I mean, I showed that in the Astrobot video where the Astrobot on physical media was $30 cheaper than buying off the PlayStation Store. And Sony themselves aren't trying to phase out physical media because they bought certain movies from Disney that they are re-releasing on physical discs. So 4K discs, Sony are going to be releasing those movies in the near future. So they know physical media is making a massive comeback due to the price of digital downloads. Let's look at what you get for your $1,500 $74 if you buy a disk drive and a stand with a PS5 Pro. A Sony have launched it as the big three upgrades. First up, you're going to get an upgraded GPU, which has 67% more compute units than the current PS5, and a 28% faster memory. Apparently, this is going to give 45% faster rendering for gameplay, which is going to make it a smoother experience when gaming. So even though we've got an upgraded GPU, the CPU storage speed on the PS5 Pro is unchanged. It may deliver 4K gameplay with 60 FPS. Possible the console won't load or boot up games any faster than the current PS5. We've got advanced ray tracing, which provides a more dynamic reflection and refraction of light. This allows the rays to cast at double, sometimes at triple the speeds of the current PS5. And last but not least, we've got AI upscaling. This is what's known as the PlayStation Spectral Resolution. This is an AI driven upscaler that uses machine based technology to provide super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. So we did release some game comparisons with that upgraded rendering. To me, it's like when you go to the opticians and they go, a or B and you go A and which one's better? It's not that noticeable with the PS5 Pro. What I've seen from the gameplay comparisons. Right, so at the moment I'm on the fence of whether I've invested in a PS5 Pro for this channel and to make some videos on it. But at the moment that price is absolutely ridiculous. Let me know in the comments down below if you are upgrading to the PS5 Pro, if you think it's worth it. I really don't. I think this console's based at people that don't own a PS5 yet. But if it was me and I didn't own a PS5, I'd be looking at buying the older stuff. PS5 and just upgrading that with a two terabyte SSD and you still quids in way cheaper than what you're going to be paying for the PS5 Pro with an additional cost for a disk drive and a stand. But as for making this video, I think the PS5 Pro is just a money making scheme for Sony. Prices have gone up not that much. What little bit of an upgrade we're getting on the PS5 Pro compared to the current version. Don't forget everything you the video today. There are links in the description below for the best place to get those gaming products. Comment down below what you think of the future of the PS5 Pro. Also, if you're going to 
invest in one and if you agree with that massive price increase. Now for those of you looking for the best way to expand the storage on your current PS5, check out this video next. And for those of you looking for the best storage for your PlayStation VR 2, check out this video next. So thanks for watching, happy gaming, and I'll catch the next one.